Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome back, all of you who are there with me. Please thumbs up for you who are there. Sorry I'm late four minutes. I was having here checking my technical issues here. But I hope everything's gonna work all right. My name is Kelly Tavares and I'm a tour guide here in Urca. And I am here with my friend Daniel from Pena Porta Production today participating and give uh, some help here to make the camera work even better for you. Today we are making a stream directly from Urca neighborhood, which is in the south zone part of the city with many beautiful landscapes surrounding us. I am Kelly Tavares, tour guide in the city, giving live streamed participations for you to share my city and the Brazilian culture of Rio de Janeiro, and also leading live walking tours and tours tailored for you and your group's live walking around Rio de Janeiro. So we offer different opportunities. And now today we are here in Urca Beach around the shore, and we will enter a street. We will also show you the landscapes around, what you can find in Urca, give you some travel tips, and go to Praia Vermelha or the Red Beach where we have a beautiful view to the Sugarloaf Mountain. And so stay with me and follow us at Rio Encantos. Emma Thank you, Emma, for your question. It's 2.35 here in Rio de Janeiro, 2.35 p.m. It's winter time and guess what? The temperature is just perfect. It's 70 Fahrenheit, I'm uh, about 29, 28 centigrade with a breeze that is just perfect. Yeah, it was the colder on fall. That's a good point, Daniel. So if you have any questions, just let me know. We are starting to show you all around. Let's go. Look, right there, the Christ Redeemer in the top, on the top of the Corcovado Mountain. And around Urca neighborhood, we have this beautiful view with a fisherman's village around here, where you also find a place where you can come and a schedule with me when you come or with a local fisherman, a boat trip. Here they are working on their boat, fixing their boats. And I will show you, we will show you the place where they have a pier, a wharf. Around here, you have already the hills that will shape the mountains of the Corcovado. And I was telling you that we will talk about eclectic neighborhood. Yeah, you can already see part of the Sugarloaf Mountains uh, complex around but it's the mountain of the Sugarloaf will be more on the other beach that we go. Greetings from Massachusetts, Boston. Karen, thanks for coming back. Rosie and Jan, Emma and Karen. Satan, you're here again. Mark, thank you so much. Mary Lou for your presence always together in Caroline. It's a beautiful day. Now look at this balaustrada. How do you call this in architecture? Do you know the name? In Portuguese, it's balaustrada. And this beautiful balaustrada around the shore of the Urca beach already tells the history of the beautiful promenade that they built up here in the beginning of the 20th century. And actually, what you see around is part of a history of a handmade beach. Yes, this is a man-made beach. A man-made beach, which was all the seashore just around the rocks. But then with the remodelings of the city of Rio de Janeiro in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, they were planning and already destroying some of the hills. Guess what? Dismantling a whole hill in the city center of the city to open up 
beautiful and big avenues. So the scraps, let's say, of this dismantling, they brought all the way here to build up these shores, filling the ground, and to build up the red beach, what soon I'm gonna show you. So stick with me. We are now showing you a little bit of the fisherman's village with the wharf where the boat trips, the boat rides, run every day. At this time, some fishermen are already returning from their fishing and others will be setting up their coolers to host and receive visitors from all over the world who will be uh, jumping on board to have a good beer, a boat ride and see the sunset in the Guanabara Bay. The Guanabara Bay is with the Atlantic Ocean. And there we have beautiful sunsets during this time of the year. I will invite you to go to a sunset tour on Sugarloaf Mountain today or every week if you want. Book now on Amphi and I will share the link with you, A-M-P-H-Y, so you can book a live session for a Sugarloaf Mountain sunset tour on a session that you can also see with videos on Zoom sessions. We can see each other. So I would finally see your faces as well. Yeah, that compass, Mary, it's really lovely. That's why I chose to start the tour from there today. Hi, Carla, hello. Hey, Sarah G, thanks for joining. Yeah, that's good when someone pops up. I really like to say hi. So. Daniel, did you see that beautiful Ipe Roxo tree, Brazilian tree blossoming with beautiful pink flowers? Please look at that. This is a native Brazilian tree and it's in a perfect time of the year. <gasps> oh, doggy. Hi. Here's a pit bull called taking care of the boat and living there. <laughs> Let's go. That's so cute. Hello, buddy. Oh. Now the visitors are boarding there on the boat for a nice trip, a nice ride in the Guanabara Bay. And I'm gonna share, we will share with you a little bit of the Urca neighborhood. These are the off the beaten track path places that I really like to share with few voyages, which is beyond the highlights. We are around the highlights, but then you have an idea of the nice things that you can actually enjoy in when you come, for example, in the Sugarloaf Mountain. You can take your time or come with me walk around Urca seashore, where there are many restaurants, bars, treats, Brazilian treats. There is the mountain of the, uh, of the Urca hill, where we are going now down there to the square. And the moon is right there on the top of the mountain. It's sweet. Now let's take a walk on this nice, nice neighborhood of Urca, which I, sh I told you that is, it brings us back to the beginning of the 20th century. And this ground that we are stepping in now, they were actually filling the sea was around here where we're stepping in and nice people are riding their bikes from Itaú Bank of Itaú Bikes and come ride your bikes. There are some nice houses such as the ones you see around and like I told you there are a few modern houses as well but the majority of these houses 
they uh they have a relation yes and please it's amazing i really love this neighborhood and it's really safe this is a military area Urca neighborhood was founded by many uh, a military who were also working and serving here on the military bases of Urca uh, forts. The, the fort of São João, for example, which will guard the entrance of the Guanabara Bay with a history of pirates, French pirates, Dutch pirates that were entering the city since the 1500s. <laughs> this is a wealthy neighborhood, an expensive place. You are right, indeed, Sarah. I wish I could live here, but I can't. As a tour guide, I, I'm a city girl, a city, city center girl, and this place that I love, but I like the quietness of this place. Now I want to share these. Please, Daniel, come here. The name of this tree is Pata de Vaca, or the cow's feet, the cow's paws. You see? It looks like a cow's paws, paw, and it gives a beautiful flower. It, its leaves are good for diabetes and many other uh, medical uh, things as well. There is another tree on the other side of the street, right across this one, which is the Chapelle de Napoleon, also known as the Napoleon's Hat. Indigenous people here of, uh, uh, of some tribes, they use their seeds to create in musical instruments. And this is something that I can share with you when we give medical herbs and magical herbs. I've been researching for a few years and something that I also love, it's another passion, the gardens. Kelly Tavares also joined. And one thing that I want to do is to share Oi, boa tarde. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining, too. So here, I shared with you the link for Amphi. And Amphi is a live stream platform which has been supporting us, teachers and guides, to have some prepaid sessions with cameras. So we can have, like, Zoom uh, rooms with the we can actually see each other, listen to each other, and have conversation. To invite you to come to the sunset in the sugar on the top of the sugar loaf today. I will get the tram card and we go all the way there. You see the cables can already be seen from here, from now here. The oh, look at this bird. Uh, it's already flew. <laughs> but you see many of these beautiful houses as well. They are from the beginning of the 20th century. Oh, the uh, ah, the station. Yeah, good. Nice spotting that, Daniel. Look. On the top. Ah. There is the station of Morro da Urca, the Urca Hill. It's the first station of the gondola, of the cable car that we will take for the Amphi uh, virtual session. If you can do it today, in about two hours, no worries, because I will leave this there available for many days of the week. You just need to add a group session and also schedule one of the days already available there. Então vamos seguir aqui. Okay, por aqui não. Aqui tem um, acho que tem casas mais é, do século XIX, XIX. Aqui é um pouquinho de 
We are in Praça Félix Laranjeiras. And in this uh, square, ah, oh, aquela de lá acho que tem mais. Laranjeiras com G. É. Não fica no bairro de Laranjeiras. É, ali tem mais casas ecléticas é. mesmo. We will show you a few houses which are from the eclectic style, such as these beautiful ones here on the corner, the green and yellow one, or you see houses that are, were a fashion among militaries who set, set up, got settled with their families here in the beginning of the 20th century, in the 1910s, when this... Uh, neighborhood was a trendy neighborhood for the inauguration of the sugar loaf uh, cable car which i'm going to show you and tell you about and what is the eclectic neighbor uh, classic style together with different other styles so eclectic architecture will incorporate many different elements of the history of architecture it can host Uh, classic, neoclassic, gothic, whatever colonial, whatever comes to mind of the architect, putting all of these elements together. Oh, thank you so much, Mary Lou. The, the connection is breaking up. Oh, okay, now. Oh, okay, thank you, Mary. If in case you have any technical problems, do like Mary, just reconnect and refresh your connection. So here we can see, uh, for example, there in that white house on the other side of the street, the columns on the walls, on the windows, they're like Roman, old Roman columns with windows which are colonial and shapes that are also modern of the beginning of the 20th century. This kind of architecture is another example of eclectic, which was a big fashion in the city of Rio de Janeiro Uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. There are more examples here of this beautiful white house here. And this is something that you see also in Urca neighborhood. Many of the houses, they are white. Some of them remember castles or forts. And why so? Why do you think so? They look like forts, fortifications, castles, and many of them are white. Like these, for example, An eclectic one, beginning of the 20th century, and you have Roman columns and uh, these square rectangular shapes already envisioning the, the Bauhaus uh, influences of modern architecture. This eclecticism, yeah, big windows. And many of them being white because the military is, uh, forts, colonial forts are white are painted white here in brazil so the military building up the houses in their neighborhood were kind of getting the same fashion the same influence and getting inspiration to build up the houses in urca so a lot of them will be found here in this neighborhood, as you see here. Not the, it's not allowed to build up buildings, tall buildings inside of Urca neighborhood. There are maximum six floors, and the majority being four floors, three, or just a family house. Babylonia? So here in front of us, there is another uh, hill, which is called the Hill of Babylonia. Ah, o moço fazendo aqui o negócio também. There is a nice, uh, an artisan now uh, fixing a chair here with uh, some of the old chair styles, and he's working on that. It's a, an art of repair of antiques, which is, uh, how can I say, not... It's disappearing almost because these are old chairs and just a few people know that. Now around us, you see like Marinha, a building from the military of the Marine. 
is the war school of the Navy on the other side. And all the bu buildings that you find in Urca, they will be related to the military schools, such as these from the Navy and others that I will show, we will show you here on the square in a minute. So this, for example, on your left, is there is a school, a kindergarten for the children of the militaries who study here in the engineering school, who live in this building here on the left. So they come from all over the country uh, to serve and to work as engineers and serve here in the military bases around Urca. Hmm? So uh, notice, please, uh, here. Thank you. Hi, Anna. Thanks for joining. Joining me here, Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio de Janeiro. We are today walking around Urca. We will finish in Praia Vermelha, and there is an invite there to join a later Sugarloaf sunset tour. And there is the station for the Sugarloaf. When you come, okay. So when you come here, I love to see We we can take a ride on the gondola of the Sugarloaf. Today, I will do that myself to go see the sunset and give the sunset tour in the Sugarloaf at Amphi. The white building down street on the right side is the Institute, the Military Institute for Engineering. I will show you that again, okay? In a minute, Mary. Uh, there you go, the cable cars. Uh, now, how long does it take to ride from Morro da Urca to the station down here? It is exciting. I love to do every... Uh, now, uh, every month I get the chance to do that. bringing visitors from all over the world here. And every week I go up the Corcovado, the Christ Redeemer as well. Also, there are different ways to get there to the Urca Hill. You can go there hiking, and it's one hour hike all the way up there. But to actually get the gondola, you need to pay anyways to be able to go to the other mountain, which is the Sugarloaf Mountain. On the later tour, when I go up, I will tell more about these two mountains as well. And they, uh, on the other side, on the right side here, is the station of the Sugarloaf. It's where people come, line up for getting your tickets, and going to the Sugarloaf. But one thing, one travel tip, important one, is if you come with a tour guide, you don't go through the long line that is formed there, because we have priority with our groups while we are working. But if you come in a high season, New Year's Eve or Carnival, then you can expect to have a wait time of one, two hours on the line, depending on the day. So I highly recommend you come with me to a tour to the Sugarloaf Mountain. And then you have more information. I will point you out cool things to do, we'll do together and experience at the fullest without going through big queues, you know. Hey, Robert, thank you so much for joining. Ah, that's a good a good question, Carla. I will answer that for you. First, I, I want to show this building. Uh, this building here is from the Institute, Engineering Institute of the Military. So people from all over the, the Brazil apply here to either study and have a 
a degree in engineering and also to work as engineers as well for the military. So it's a very important building. It's very competitive to either come and teach or to come and learn and work here. They have very uh, difficult exams to enter. And many of the monuments built up in the square are related to the history of the military in the area. Now, the name of Sugarloaf, it comes from the lumps of sugar, the molds of sugar that were used to put there the, the sugar cane, the sugar made out of the sugar cane. So they were exactly the same shape of the Sugarloaf Mount. So it uh, looks like a coincidence, but the country which shaped its first mass economy based on the export of sugar lumps has one of the most iconic mountains in the capital, what was the capital of Brazil, as the same shape of the, the that same mold and the sugar lumps. Hey, Mary Lou, a vertical of this monument? Sure. So not, not really, Sarah, not many people want to work for the military. I guess if there was more opportunities of like research, for example, I think the military could uh, join other kind of initiatives, you know, in my opinion. Uh, because there are so many people with expertise that they could work for the protection of the territory in terms of uh, against pirates, pirating. Uh, and then to protect, for example, against logging, these kind of things with the police. I think the military would be much more useful if they were using all the expertise, the resources to be protecting territory from exploitation, from trafficking, this kind of problems that many countries still face, you know. And so that would generate much more opportunities of learning, teaching, and getting to know the country and protecting the country. Yes, this is a, this um, the constructions related to different wars that happened in Brazil throughout time, representing some of the military fighting some of these wars. Now here we are in the, the Urca Square, and a little bit of the history of this square. If you look, I brought a, an old picture that I would like to share with you. So these beautiful constructions that you see here, they were built exactly in, in, on this square of Morda Urca in 1908. This is a photograph of Augusto Malta. And you could see two pavilions of the states representing the states of Sao Paulo and Minas Gerais. I don't know if you've heard that in other tours or... But in the 1800s, uh, 1851, I think, or uh, in the middle of the 1800s, Britain, Britain hosted one of the first uh, scientific is, uh, uh, fairs in the world. So that launched a new trend of hosting scientific fairs for economic trade, scientific findings to be visited from people from all over the world. So Urca, this place where we are now, hosted a few of these buildings, like these and that, which were called as the ephemeral, ephemeral architecture. They were teared down because the materials they were built with, built up with, were of not very uh, lasting, less long-lasting quality. You know. Also, também. And also, therefore, because of that the maintenance of, of such buildings also became uh, very expensive 
in a time that they want di really didn't want to uh, invest on that. The goal of those fairs were mainly to showcase the development of the country on its ideas, economic and culture as well. So this happened with the opening of big promenades, the creation of many filling space such as this, and place where people could gather with different perspectives in the port area for the, the trade and commerce, here for the military bases, and uh, in Cinelandia, for example, for the cultural hubs that hosted there. Now let's see if we are lucky enough to see the, some of the parakeets which are around here. Look at them. So there are many nests of parakeets here. And they are called, known by us, as the maritacas. And the maritacas, they are really loud. Every day in the morning, I can hear them, I don't know how, crying, making this noise. Look, they need to go really slowly. Otherwise, they will fly. Oh, there, there they are. I hope you've seen. They will be everywhere around. They are really noisy. For example, when I give a tour about the Maracanã, the word Maracanã is from, comes from the indigenous people in the area. Uh, in a long time ago, before the Maracanã Stadium was built up, and that was related to the sounds of the Maracanã birds, which was similar to these. There are still some of them. There are many species of these green ones. They look like parrots, and the noise they make the indigenous people there of the Tupi Guarani branch, uh, they would say, oh, these are the Maracanã. So the river Maracanã is there still. And then they built up the stadium of Maracanã. Now, come with me to the Red Beach. Let's take a look there. Nice start to the show. There is another surprise for you besides the beautiful views. The tour is over. Sim. So Urca has the Urca Beach, many restaurants around on that side where we started the tour with beautiful sunsets, nice place to be, many people gather there at the end of the day for the sunset and also here crossing the neighborhood, we come to the Red Beach, Praia Vermelha, which is also a man-made beach. It's an invented beach with the scraps, the, the dismantling of the city center uh, hill of Castelo. Yeah, this whole tour is on the top of feelings. Good point, then. And from here in the Red Beach, in Praia Vermelha, we have this beautiful view of the sugar loaf in this gorgeous day that today. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining. And it's one of my favorite places for the view of the sugar loaf. Please. Uh, I want to finish this tour. I want to finish this tour with this beautiful view and people enjoying this afternoon here at 3.10 p.m. na Praia Vermelha. Of course, there are a lot more to be said that I can share. I can give you this same tour other times and I promise that I will be giving other tips, other travel tips, answering your questions and showing other perspectives of this same place where we are. I just uh, showed you part of that, but there is so much that we can share here that it's a place worth coming. So please subscribe to my profile. Thanks, Deb, for joining. Thanks, Rosie from London for leaving uh, some cash to support our work. It's highly appreciated. Nice. And I hope the beautiful views here can inspire you, even with these sounds. 
Follow Me, Kelly Tavares. Oh, Mary, that's almost becoming a, a legend. I will not try the Christ Redeemer again because I will ask, I will be with Jordana next week. She was lucky to one time show the sugar loaf, the Christ Redeemer, and Tachi could do it for a little bit another time. But I just could show the back of the statue. So I don't want to go through that again. I will ask Jordana some extra tips, but it also depends on the day, you know. But Sugarloaf, it has better signal. It's lower the mountain. So today, please uh, follow the amphi. Follow me on Hego. And also remember to follow myself on amphi if you want to have Zoom sessions with cameras and actually show your face so I can hear your voice and we can have some FaceTime while we have virtual live streaming while also supporting my work by commissioning and funding the live stream sessions. Just remembering you that When we run tours, we have costs with buying data for our phones, buying uh, uh, tickets, travels, trips with buses, car, time, snacks. It's a lot of investments and equipment, and any support is highly appreciated. Bev, thank you for joining. Liam, also thank you. Please follow me on Amphi. And if you want to see the sunset from the Sugarloaf Mountain today or on the following days, just book a session there with us, okay? All right. Thank you so much. I'm Kelly Tavares, and this is my friend Daniel. <laughs> Offering you live stream sessions directly from Rio. Bye-bye. Big kisses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>